So, finally, uh, I'll get to uh, a simulation example. Uh, and this is uh, the most basic system that we are talking about. This is the very simple uh, black circuit. Uh, and if you're familiar with E. coli at all, black circuit is uh, one of those classic examples of impression in, in suggestive behavior currently. Um, basically, E. coli can eat lactose, and lactose is just a sugar. Um, normally, E. coli likes to eat glucose. So it doesn't make the machinery to digest lactose all the time. That would be a waste of its resources. As a result, the gene that encodes for the machinery that will digest lactose is always repressed um, by what's called uh, the lac repressor. If E. coli swimming around encounters lactose, then some of it may diffuse across the membrane, and it will bind to this repressor and cause it to disassociate. Once it disassociates, the gene, which, is, which was repressed by this, can then be expressed, and the machinery to di digest lactose will be made. In addition to that, a particular protein uh, will, bind in the will, will also be made, which will bind in the membrane, and this actively imports more and more lactose into the system. As a result, the concentration of lactose inside the cell increases much, much higher in a sort of positive feedback loop. Um, these additional lactose molecules bind to all the remaining repressors, ensuring that they do not rebind to the, the, the gene. And therefore, the cell stays in what we call the induced state. Uh, after all the food is gone or the cells swam away, um, the level of inducer or lactose inside the cell will go down, and the repressor will eventually rebind. The machinery to digest lactose uh, will all be degraded, and we go back to the and so that's basically what the movie I'm going to show is going to show you. And I just want you to compare. Oh, that's really dark. But you, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. Uh, just compare this to the image of um, E. coli. This was in a single molecule experiment in which those, those proteins which were being made that import the lactose actively into the cell were tagged with a, a fluorescence probe, which allows them to be highly visible in yellow. And I want to emphasize that the two cells that I'm about to show are both identical in the sense that all the same chemical reactions are going on inside them. They are both starting in the same approximate state, and they're both subject to the same external environment. And you'll just see their, their outcome is not identical. Oops. So what you're seeing in the, the yellow blocks, or the yellow balls, are the uh, LACY inducer molecules uh, diffusing over the membrane. Occasionally you'll see a pink ball appear. That is the mRNA, or the, the, product, the expression of the gene which actually produces these. Um, and there was a, one burst. And I should say that this simulation is over the entire life cycle of E. coli, not life cycle, uh, cell cycle of E. coli, which is about one hour. So it's sped it up by many times to about 60 seconds. There's another burst. So now you can see clearly that one of the cells, completely behaving stochastically, has induced into the same environment. The other cell has turned to the uninduced state, or very close to it. And uh, you can see how closely this actually re uh, resembles what is observed in the experiment. So we hope that you know, technology like this will allow us to understand in greater detail the inner workings of bacteria and ultimately uh, more complex organisms. Uh, and so just uh, I want to thank my advisor, uh, my, uh, my lab mate Elijah and Leonardo, uh, John Stone of course, Lynn May uh, here in the engineering computer department, Jeremy Enos and NCSA, and all the people who make us uh, make available Lincoln to us for our computation. Thank you for your attention. You don't have to apply. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. No. Oh, never mind. Okay. Any questions?
So we have plenty of time for questions because the piece is not here yet. Are you keeping the, e. coli, the geometry of the E. coli cell fixed when you're doing the simulation? So, yes, the, the actual size of the cell is kept fixed. Um, the volume. And, yeah, the volume of the cell. Now, ultimately, we would like to move to a case in which we can allow the cell to grow because clearly over a cell cycle, the cell's dividing. It's not staying the same size. Um, but right now, you know, what we have available to us, we keep it the same size. However, the packing within the cell, although it's to the same percentage, is done differently. And this is actually what we would expect. Uh, you know, cells are not completely physically identical. They do have, while their, their actual concentration of packing might be different, might be the same, the locations of individual particles are obviously up there. And that is one of the sort of the ways in which this model can take into account uh, stochastic behavior. Any other questions?